and welcome to Bright Mike. I'm Sam. I'm Liz. And this is our 50th episode! <laughs> welcome to our <laughs> a bonanza, a spooktacular, a thrilling bonus episode. And it's kind of a combination, I would say, because it's our 50th episode, but we are two weeks away from hitting our one year anniversary birthday. Happy birthday to us! Woo, happy birthday! We're one! Before we get into it, I just want to thank all of you. We want to thank all of you. I don't. For supporting. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But, like, it's all Liz. <laughs> <laughs> it's only me and my only gratitude. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we just want to thank you all for listening over the course of the year and interacting with us and helping us grow this child that we spawned. <laughs> yeah. We that gave, we spawned from the hellfire. <laughs> we gave birth to it very early on in the pandemic, mm. and it's survived and it's given us something to hold on to. <laughs> yeah, something to do. It's given us a way to interact with people all over the country, all over the world. Yeah, horror really. fans alike, even yeah. non horror fans um, that just enjoy our b- playful banter. <laughs> yeah, it's nice that. In a time where we didn't really have any human interaction, we were still able to interact with all of you. I'm gonna cry. And it means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, no, it really does. It, it's, it's been amazing. And I can't wait for the rest of this year. Another 50 to go. <laughs> I know. We have such a good lineup for this year. I'm so excited. I was literally looking at our lineup while I was at the gym the other day just to see like what was coming down the pipeline. And mm-hmm. I got so excited. Mm-hmm. I literally was like, ah! Because spoilers, we try to plan everything out way ahead of time, and we get so, so amped up when we're in the drawing board. (laughs) Yes, for real. Like, we, little do you guys know, but we have pretty much every episode planned. Oh, yeah. Like, we're we're on top of our shit over here at Bright Mike Headquarters Incorporated. (laughs) In case you had any doubts. (laughs) Yes. Our global headquarters. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, just an all-around thanks. We love you. We love talking about movies. We love horror. We love you. You So thank you for making this amazing. You made my heart grow three sizes today. (laughs) Well, enough of that. (laughs) That's a that on that. (laughs) Let's get into it. We have a fun Q&A plan today. And I'm so excited. We asked you guys to ask us some questions. Your burning uh, questions. Your burning questions. Your chlamydia questions. And we got so many good ones. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear what Sam has to say because we did not talk about this ahead of time. No, we did not. So my reactions are real. <laughs> <laughs> You're hearing it in real time, even though it's not real time. But we'll pretend it's real time. Yes. <laughs> so let's get into it. Let's do it. Our first question. Round one. All of these are anonymous. <laughs> um, Sam. Yes. Most overrated franchise. I don't know. They're all overrated. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna go overrated. Mm. Before you say your answer, yeah, I think this is a difficult question because let me pull out my PowerPoint <laughs> with my yes. points. This is a tough question because if a movie or set of movies is part of a franchise, I feel like there's a reason. You know, obviously they're loved, so they made it into a franchise. But in our opinion. Some, I guess some could be overrated. Yeah. What I would thoughts? I would say it's hard because I guess I don't know if I would say overrated or overhyped, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to be controversial yet brave. Oh, God. <laughs> and say the Conjuring franchise. Ooh. Overrated because I love the first Conjuring. When the first Conjuring came out, I shit you not. True story, slept with my light on for three nights. Mm -hmm. Like, would not turn it off. Was terrified. Then, the second Conjuring came out. Well, first, I guess Annabelle came out. Was Annabelle first? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, because I I was single, I remember, when that came out. Because my aunt and I saw it, it like, a midnight show. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was trash. And then the Conjuring 2 came out. And it was also, like, it it just, it wasn't as good. Like, the nun was scary, but the Mm -hmm. nun was all of, like, five minutes. And, like, the ending with the nun was kind of, eh. I'm just not crazy about it. And, like, the whole spinoff with the Annabelle universe. And then they're doing the nun universe. I just, keep it. They're doing more, even more. 
Like, I, know. I think it was in The Conjuring 2 that they had that, like, crooked man, and I think yeah. they're doing a whole crooked uh, man thing. Kill me. The thing is, and I agree with you, like, I like the first Conjuring. I like the second Conjuring, but the first Conjuring, <sighs> that's, like, the first time in a long time that I had been, like, truly scared, you know, watching a movie. There's so many parts in that movie that I'm like, whoa. Agreed. Nightmare worthy. Um, and the other movies just, like, don't hold up. No, no. So, as a franchise or a universe, it's a little weak. Yeah. They, I feel like they focus so much on what they can market and what they can turn into its own movie that, like, I'm not, the Crooked Man wasn't a scary part of The Conjuring 2. Why am I going to see a standalone movie? Right. You know, The Nun was scary because it was a silent demon and they did really cool things with it in the movie. But as a standalone, I don't care about a backstory. I don't care. Like, it was, yeah. I, that's my problem. I don't care enough. It wasn't enough to stand on its own two feet. Right. Essentially. Right. But, um, yeah. And I think that it's, it almost gives it, like, they were trying to milk it. And they're trying to milk all of it. It's like they're doing, they're giving it the Marvel treatment. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It by trying to create its own universe. It and doesn't that doesn't always it. pan out. It's, like, essentially what they were trying to do with, like, the Universal Monsters, like, the new um, universe that they're trying to create. I mean, they had the Tom Cruise mummy, and look at how that did. <laughs> right. Like, I'd say the Invisible Man is the most successful out of, like, right. all the remakes, or, like, you know, reintroduction. Reimagining. Yes, <laughs> yes, thank you. But, yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. And for this, I, I agree with you. Um, for me, I put Phantasm. Oh think, my god, yes. I agree. Because that's the first thing that came to mind. I ugh, I hate those movies. I know. And they're so loved and I don't understand why. I don't. Like they I'm came so out worried. in the seventies, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Which we know if we've if we've listened to all my episodes or all, all my episodes. All my episodes. <laughs> if you've listened to past episodes, you know how I feel about things that came out during that era and this is the problem that I have is the Phantasm movies. Yeah, I just could never get into them. Um, they're not my cup of tea, and I know that so many people love them, but I just nah. The like the the tall man, Angus Scrim, he was such a like big D. You know, everybody loves him and his character, but it, it's it's not scary. No, I never in my life have watched a phantasm movie and been at all scared right i've been bored to death <laughs> <laughs> to, like bored to death yeah agreed no not, that's a that's a really good one not not a fan and there's like how many movies i don't even know a lot. I, I, I know i haven't seen them all <laughs> absolutely not i also was going to go hellraiser Ooh. i think is also overrated come for me i don't care <laughs> it's just i don't care yeah. it's not scary again with Pinhead, he's the face of the franchise, and yet he's barely in any of the movies. Mm -hmm. It's all Cenobites, yeah. and he's, like, the main one, but you don't ever really see him. Yeah. You know, like, in the first Hellraiser, I wouldn't even say he's the bad guy. It's that the brother the dude, or yeah. the, whoever it is. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I don't get it. I don't get them at all. Yeah. Now, I'm going to flip the flip you on your head a little bit and say what is the most underrated franchise in your opinion in my personal professional if we have the same opinion, answer i'm gonna scream <laughs> i don't think we do oh okay good. i don't i don't think so that's good though yeah um i'm gonna go twilight is <laughs> so underrated as a horror franchise i'm just kidding i'm totally kidding with you um i am gonna say the ring okay. as an underrated franchise i know I guess you could call it a franchise. There's multiple movies. Um, I just say it's underrated because I feel like the first one is good. Um, the, I guess, like, the original Japanese ones are, like, the Ringyu is okay. It's not very, but, like, the, I think I think visually they're terrifying. Um, and they're kind of, like, a joke. Yeah. You know, I feel like. They've been mocked for sure. <laughs> for sure. I, feel, I, again, controversial yet brave. <laughs> I just think that visually they're terrifying and they have left such a mark on you as a person. <laughs> me, yes. And no matter what, no matter how old I get, no matter how, I guess, like, jokey the movies become, to me, 
they're always terrifying. Like, I tried to watch, I think, like, the 3D one. Yeah. Uh, like, the rings, or, like, one of the new ones. I tried to watch it at home, and I was like, this is a joke. And I couldn't, I couldn't make it more than, like, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Like, I just, it freaks me out. And if that's not a sign of a good horror franchise, I don't know what is, because all I'm asking is to get a little scared, get a little spooky. It's you good know. that uh, something that, because that movie came out in what, the first one? 2002. 2002. So after all this time, it still scares you. Yeah. And that's why I think it's underrated, um, because a lot of people just think it's a joke. And um, I think it's spooky. Mine's a, more of a goofy answer, and I hey. feel like you already know what I'm going to say. Um, I think I'm so curious. The Slumber Party Massacre franchise. Of course. How did I not see it coming? I mean, huh? Listen, if you haven't seen uh, Slumber Party Massacre, especially one and two, you're in for a treat. Go watch them. They're great. <laughs> especially the second one. Especially the second one. The are best you, one. Are you a fan of horror musicals? Boy, howdy. This one really gets you. <laughs> How do you feel about a musical number in the middle of a horror movie? <laughs> <laughs> like a 10 minute musical number. Oh. It's yeah. the grease lightning of horror. It is. And it's amazing. And I love it so much. And not enough people know about it. I know, like, diehard horror fans do. I see you all, and I agree with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, so, oh, if you haven't seen it, you're missing out. I feel like this question, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, it's just, I, I, like, it's, it's so wacky. They're not great movies by any means, but they're so good. (laughs) They are. They're, like, bad good. Good, bad. Oh, they're so enjoyable. Yeah. I love them. Mm -hmm. I feel like this question, like, the most underrated franchise was hard. Because, like you said, if a movie was given the opportunity to be a franchise, then clearly it's... Loved. Loved. Um, So how do you tell what's overrated and underrated? Um, I think, in in their own way, like, every franchise is overrated. Yeah. Well, you could definitely take it too far. You know. Yeah. Like, Saw. (laughs) Well, exactly. So, like... That was originally going to be, like, my most overrated or overhyped, but also, I guess, not really, because people would see them yearly. They would come out around Halloween, but, like, everyone, I feel like after maybe, like, the third or fourth one was seeing them, like, ironically. Like, oh, I'm going to see the the Saw movie. Because it's out. Because it's out. And it's the only movie coming out on Halloween. (laughs) Exactly. Like, it's... It's right there. But there's also like die hard soft fans who like they love every movie, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So it's hard to say something like that because it's so popular and it blew up and you know whatever. So I wouldn't even say that that's like an overrated. You know, it might be in my in my opinion in our opinion, but Mm -hmm. like overall to everybody else, mm, right? You know. Yeah. How do you know? Now, what do you think is the most overrated film and underrated film? Oh. We'll start with overrated. <laughs> Fuck. Most overrated, like, horror film. I would say Hellraiser for me. I think Since, so since you mentioned it. Yeah. I, I haven't seen all of them, but when I saw the first one, meh. Yeah. It was alright. I just, I know people are, like, die hard for it, and I'm like, mm. I would also say Phantasm. I feel like there's a lot, I feel like there, there's a lot of good answers for this, like, mm-hmm. just singular, like, Hellraiser for sure overhyped definitely phantasm i would even i don't know i guess this one is hard just like one movie being overhyped i don't know what do you, what would you say i my oh hell, hell hellraiser yeah. yeah for sure but, i mean there's so many though there are so many Ugh, it's hard being put on the spot like this <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this one. Like, uh, well, what do you think is an underrated movie? An underrated horror movie? Shit. I guess... I guess it depends on your definition of horror in a way. Um, I think there's a lot that fly by under the radar that maybe some people wouldn't deem as horror that I think are horror. Mm-hmm. Um, Neon Demon, Nocturnal Animals. I think those are very underrated in the horror genre. Or, like, horror category. I know Nocturnal Animals animals specifically, I watched by myself and was disturbed. And then I had Luke watch it because I was like, this movie is so good, but it's like the material is so dark and so heavy. And we watched it. He refuses to watch it. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. Because it disturbed him so bad. Oh. He refuses. And he, there's a jump scare in it that still, no matter how many times I watch this movie, 
gets me every time got luke really good like he said <laughs> he said he was so disturbed by this film he didn't he like didn't stop thinking about it for a week like it bothered him Ooh. to the core yes Ooh. yes what do you think is most underrated the one that comes to mind for me is one that I know that you love and I love that I don't hear a lot of people talk about is The Loved Ones. Yeah. Because absolutely. I, I don't hear enough people talking about it. It's, um, it's a good movie. And I don't know. I just I, I feel like it flew under the radar when it came out. It flew sure. under my radar because I didn't see it like right when it came out. I think you're the one that told me about it. But I'm surprised that more people don't talk about it, especially in, like, the horror community. There's a movie similar to it called Hounds of Love that I also think flies under the ra- radar and, like, would be considered an underrated film. Um, also disturbed me to the point where I couldn't finish it for a long time. Oh, really? Yeah. It's really fucked up. It's about, without spoiling anything, it's, it's about... on my watch list. Because <laughs> I yeah. saw it's on Hulu. And I'm yeah. Like, oh. it, that's where I watched it. Um, it's about a couple that likes to kidnap and rape and torture young girls. And it really <laughs> fucking bothered me. Yeah, it really bothered me for a long time. I, yeah. I It took me a long time to finish it. Oof. Yeah, so underrated. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what is, I guess I guess you kind of answered this one already, but the scariest film that stuck with you? Definitely The Ring. <laughs> Definitely The Ring for a good uh, since 2002 um but also insidious was yes. yeah the old lady from insidious one before they gave her like a whole backstory in the second one don't give him a backstory yeah haunted it still haunts me both insidious of them. was a surprise yeah insidious is another movie that like continues to terrify me to this day it's true it's like true. even rewatching it i'm like oh god what would you think, or what's a movie that's tough with you? So, definitely Insidious, The Conjuring. Um, the one that comes to mind for me, and I know I've talked uh, about it with you, uh, The Grudge, for sure. Mm-hmm. The first time I saw The Grudge, I saw it in the theaters. Um, I don't know what it was. It's like, I've rewatched it since, and it's not as scary, really. But at the time, when I saw it, it just, like, disturbed me so much. Just, like... Uh, like oh that like the visuals the little boy the creepy girl like oh the scene where she's crawling down the stairs and don't forget it broke boundaries by being the first to my knowledge villain that gets you under the blankies oh my god i know Mm -hmm. i know and like that's like the safe zone and it wasn't (laughs) it definitely wasn't they definitely raped my safe zone (laughs) (laughs) they invaded my safe zone yes all bets were off oh i feel like because they came around, or came out around the same time, and they were both, like, you know, from the Japanese camp, I feel like you were either, you, I mean, I, I'm i horrified by both, but I feel like you were either originally scarred by the ring, or, or the, the grudge. grudge, and then the other was just, like, yeah. similar. And I think we've talked about that before, because the ring, like, messed you up, when the grudge messed me up, and I just, ugh. I haven't been the same since. I know. <laughs> I'm a changed person. It changes the fabric of who you are. <laughs> What would you say is the most disturbing movie you've ever seen? The most disturbing movie. Well, I have two answers for this, I think. Hmm. I think... Th- I mean, Hounds of Love was pretty upsetting. Um, Human Centipede oh. is disturbing. Mm-hmm. Which one? All of them? <laughs> I've only seen the first one. <laughs> I was actually going to put that as... um an overrated franchise, but then I realized I'm, I haven't seen them all, so how do I know if it's overrated? True. You know? Um, but that was, I mean, disturbing. Yeah. Very disturbing. It just makes you feel, like, icky mm-hmm. afterwards. Yeah. Um, yeah, what do you think? Okay, so for me, I would say Ooh. one of the most is Irreversible. Okay. Which is, you I'm told pretty me sure, that. yeah, I'm pretty sure I've talked to you about it before. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a lot. It's a lot for that movie. The whole movie takes place in reverse, so the end is in the beginning. Uh, you know, there's, like, the scene right in the beginning with, like, the heavy gore, but um, that didn't even disturb me as much as the ten-minute rape scene, Ooh. which is supposed to be the end of the movie, but obviously it's it's the beginning of the movie, or the end of the movie, but, yeah. Yeah. You know what That's, I mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's confusing to, like, say out loud, but, yeah, it's... It's the the fact that it lasts so long and just like oh, lingers. <laughs> yeah, that's 
and you just see everything and it's horrible and like uh but they're never I, fun i feel like psychologically mother was pretty fucked up <laughs> oh my god yeah the movie like i had i'm glad i didn't see that in the theater because i think i would have had a full-blown panic attack if i had seen it but when i watched it at home i actually did pause it and like i was like i need a break <laughs> yeah I need an intermission for this movie, because this is a lot. There's I, so much that happens in that movie that's just anxiety-inducing. I did. I saw it in the theater, um, at a th- one of those theaters where, like, they bring you food, um, but we didn't get any food, and it was really interesting. The Probably seats, a good thing. <laughs> right. Well, the seats, like, were really weird. They weren't theater seats. They were, like, roller chairs, like, office chairs. That's weird. Yeah, which is super weird. And the movie was uncomfortable, and I was uncomfortable, and for the last, like, maybe 45 minutes, I had to pee so bad, so my bladder hurt, but because all this shit is, like, happening so fast at the end, like, I didn't want to leave, but I think that's the only way I got through it was because I was concentrating so bad <laughs> on my bladder that I'm like, this is worse than the movie. Like, this is worse pain than the movie, but, yeah. Your body was numbed yeah. <laughs> to the experience. It was fucking wild. I'll that say it was wild. It was crazy. That goes off the rails. Yes. <laughs> I like, would say insane. Also, how do I forget a movie that disturbed me for life was Cannibal Holocaust. Uh, not that the movie's icky. Yes, like yeah, like not that the movie was disturbing. It's the turtle death, the animal death, the animal death, the turtle death specifically. It turns my stomach to think of it. That is a, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. It's why 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 unnecessary unnecessary. And it's, like, it's gross enough when you're watching it, and then just to know that it's real, mm-hmm. it's, oh, it's awful. It's disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. It's always the animal deaths. <laughs> mm-hmm. In any movie, anyway. Because they don't have a, like, they, they don't, don't know. know any better. Yeah. They don't know any better. That's awful. Ugh. Maybe a more lighthearted question next. <laughs> uh, what was your favorite episode to record? Ooh. Hands down, probably, oh, <laughs> probably, um, fear versus the crush. Really, I didn't think you'd say that. Yeah, I mean, midsummer. I, I, obviously, I, I thought you were gonna say midsummer. Midsummer, obviously, because it was like five hours of me just geeking out and Liz just <laughs> taking the just back seat of this one. <laughs> uh, so sorry about that. You were bathed in a golden light. <laughs> I had my flower crown on. I was in the on. shadows. <laughs> I left the room and had a full, full four-course meal. You were in the golden teepee getting stuffed. <laughs> I was in my flower crown. Uh, no, so Midsummer was my favorite movie to cover, but I think doing Fear versus the Crush, yes. I laughed so much, oh and it was just God. like, I had so much fun. Like, Can I, we get a Mark Wahlberg impression, please? <laughs> Mr. Walker. <laughs> Listen here, Mr. Walker. <laughs> uh, Nicole <Star> forever. <laughs> forever. What was your favorite episode to record? Uh, okay, so I had one. I like you with Midsummer. My favorite movie to cover was Poltergeist because mm-hmm. it's one of my favorite. I saw that coming. Horror movies of all time. And I just had, it was a joy to talk about it at length. <laughs> <laughs> But one of the funniest movies, or one of the funniest recording sessions we had was, in my opinion, was for The Burning. Yes! <laughs> oh, bitch. The Burn Team. The Burn Team. <laughs> getting cropped. <laughs> You're getting cropped. It was the summer of George. The summer of George Costanza. <laughs> oh, my God. So much fun. That was even more fun than Sleepaway Camp, which oh. I do treasure. Had some but good moments. <laughs> that leads me to a fun question of... What is there an episode that you wish you could redo? Ooh. Ooh. What have we covered? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've heard so many things. I have one in particular that sticks out in my mind still to this day and haunts me. Like I refuse. Mm. Is it our Patreon episode? No. Oh. No, but if oh. you're curious, go ahead and go over onto Patreon and listen. <laughs> Plug. <laughs> <laughs> what is yours? Mine would be Adam's Family Values. Why? Because I feel like the entire time I was like, and then this happens, and it was funny, and then this happens, and it was funny, and then she says this, and (laughs) it it was funny, funny. and I liked it, and I liked this, and I liked, and it is, but I feel like 
I was so focused on like getting every line into the podcast that I wasn't. For me, it was a blur, and I thought we just quoted the whole thing. (laughs) I think we did. I think we did. But like, that's the sad part. Is like, I think you were funny, but I think back, and I won't listen to it because I refuse to listen to myself. The way I sound in my memory to that episode is like, and then she said this, and I laughed, and I liked it, and then she said this, and then he laughed, and I liked it. Ugh. Yeah, that's probably your answer. An episode I would redo. I don't. Oh, if you don't have one, that's good. I know. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Maybe. Well, good. Yeah, I guess. I mean, so and please, when I say this, don't go listen to them. But our first couple episodes are a little dicey for me <laughs> <laughs> because. Just, we were new. We were newbies at this, and we were not comfortable, and it was awkward, and please don't put me through that by listening to it on my behalf. <laughs> our cover, our coverage of Ready or Not is so long. It's so long. We did, like, a beat by beat, like, literally, and then she turned around, and then she said this, and then she did this, and it doesn't we didn't do know. Queen Samara weaving any justice. Yeah. I feel like down the line we should redo it. Right? Maybe we'll put our the first episodes <laughs> on Patreon. <gasps> Ooh. Then they have to pay to listen <laughs> yes. to my, listen to my awkward ass. <laughs> it's awful. If you want to subject yourself to torture, you have to pay. <laughs> Money is paying, <laughs> right? Oh my god, no! All right, if you could team up with any final girl, who would it be? Erin from Your Next, <gasps> hands Ooh. down. She is a queen. Yes, yeah, she's resourceful. She's a badass. She gives no fucks. She's cute, and she's got a fun accent. She's a bad B. Yes, and she, like, she was helping people survive. Like, she's not just, like, you know, all for herself. Mm -hmm. She is a survivalist and also will help you survive, too. And a humanitarian. (laughs) Hell yeah. She's, like, ready with the assist when you are. Who would you pick to team up as your final girl? I would say Nancy from A Nightmare on Elm Street. Because she's sassy, and I like that. I do. I like that in my women. (laughs) (laughs) And I want to fight Freddy (laughs) Krueger. He, oh my god, Freddy Krueger would be so much fun to hang out with. Right? Yes. Oh my god, if you could hang out with any one of the, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what final, well, no, what, what horror villain do you vibe with? <laughs> right? I feel like I'm a Freddy. Because yeah. I'm so fancy. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I have quips. I have quips. <laughs> right? I'm so cheeky with it. I got puns for days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, okay. Nancy's a good one. She's solid. Yeah. I just, I, I feel her sass, her vibe. Mm-hmm. I feel like you mesh well. Yeah, I like that. I see that for you. All right, most mainstream horror movie that you haven't seen. Oh, you got you got some. I got some. Um, some that shocked me. <laughs> yeah, Jaws being a big one. I have not seen that. Will continue to not see that. <gasps> no, you should. I know. I know. I uh, it came out in the seventies. I'm gonna force oh. you to watch it one day. <laughs> I know. I'll strap you to a chair. <laughs> Force your eyebrow, your eyeballs open. <laughs> Maybe we'll have um, a summer movie night like we did last summer. Yes. Yes. And we'll watch John We need outside. a pool. Yes. We'll watch it outside on my projector. <gasps> yes! I'll bring um, a little floaty for my margarita. Yes. I love that. Okay, then I would watch summer it. Summer 2021. Yes! <laughs> um, yeah, so that one. Aliens I haven't seen. What are the other ones I've mentioned? I feel like there's a lot. The one that comes to my head is The Omen. I've never seen The Omen. Is that your most over- overrated movie that you haven't seen? Or that or The Babadook. I haven't seen The Babadook. <gasps> but, yeah. But I've heard mixed things about The Babadook. Don't so. watch that. <laughs> That's what I mean by mixed, because I've heard a lot of good things that I know you hate. <laughs> I hate it. Spoiler alert, I hate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think The Omen. Yeah. I've never seen any of them. That's crazy. The old ones, because I know there's a couple in there, and then the new one. I've never seen them. I have seen the original and the remake, and they are terrifying. Good, oh. they're good. <laughs> are you trying to convince me or yourself? I both. <laughs> <laughs> I don't regret seeing them. I've seen the new Omen twice, so it was good enough for me to watch it a second time. See, it's not that I had I like don't want to watch them. I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, the Babadook. Don't, I would say, watch it so you can say you watched it. He looks spooky. Yeah, he's not in it enough. Oh. 
Okay. It, it's like the Hellraiser thing. Mm-hmm. He's the Babadook. He's the titular character. <laughs> <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> yeah, but he's not really in it that much. Hmm. Eh, it's all right. Two out of five. No. <laughs> 1.5 out of five. One point, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. my preliminary score. That's the tea. Subject to change. That is the T. I'm surprised about the omen. Surprised about, Yeah. I know. Mm. Crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. Yeah. Just, yeah. Now I'll have to go watch it. <laughs> all right. Most consistently well-made films in a franchise. Ooh, I have a good one. Go first. <laughs> you ready for this? Yes, I'm ready, ready. Evil Dead. Yes! Because there's not a bad one. It's true. There's some that are better than others, but even the remake is is really good. Amen. Amen. Like, the, the remake is scary like the yeah. remake is what the original i think wanted like intended to be but the original so good and, the original's we, so and good. i know we covered it and we i enjoyed talking about it yeah i like the second one i like how off the rails it gets with army of darkness yeah it's just an all-around good like series of movies it's, they're, they're consistently well like there's not a bad one in the bunch yeah for me that's the one that comes to my brain first that's true i'm trying to think of anything else because even, like, Paranormal Activity, there's not, there's not mm. good ones for that one. <laughs> See, I feel bad because I, what I, what I had originally thought only has two movies. <laughs> um, I thought, oh my god, why can't I think of, like, The Collector in the Collection. Okay. I like those movies. I think both of them are good. I think they were gonna make a third, or they are making a they third. Are making a third. Um, the collected. <laughs> yes. I'm sure that's going to be good. I thought they both were consistent throughout. I feel bad that I didn't think of anything with more movies in the franchise, but Evil Dead had crossed my mind. I was actually thinking it was weird enough. I was thinking about that this morning while I was brushing my teeth. I was like, oh, I should say Evil Dead because I like all those movies in the yeah. franchise. Yeah. My next answer, I guess, would be Final Destination, but... There's there's the weak weak one. What is it? The third one. It's like the weak one. I haven't seen them all. Oh, okay. I've only seen the first one, the three D one, and the last one. Okay. Yeah, but those are like consistent throughout in theme. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Ooh. Oh. Nope. It's gone. I I, th- I thought of something, but it's gone. <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> and it's gone. It flew right by me. God damn it. What are your comfort horror films? Ooh, I have so many. Yeah, this is a this is tough because there are a lot. I feel yeah. like we've answered this question somewhere down the line before. I think maybe in our original maybe. episodes. I feel like we did. Yeah, or at least talked about them. Yeah. Um, comfort horrors for me would be like Sleepy Hollow. Yes. Would be Ghost Ship. Would be the Evil Dead franchise. Like any of them, I could pop any one of them in. Maybe not the original, or like the maybe not the remake, because that was like you know scary, scary. Yeah. But like any like. Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness. I Army of Darkness is one of those movies, if I'm, like, awake at 3 in the morning, I can just pop that in and go back. It comforts me. It right to sleep. It comforts you. It's yeah. like a hug. <laughs> it is. Doesn't bother me in the least. Um, sleep, yeah, Sleepy Hollow is another favorite of mine. Ghost Ship, I would say... I, at the loved ones at this point, even. I've, I've watched, <laughs> I think in the last month, I've watched it, like, four times. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, definitely Sleepy Hollow, because I could just, I, every time I watch that movie, I just love it all over again. Mm-hmm. Um, Ooh, As Above, So Below, too. That's another one. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. The original Halloween. Okay. I don't know why. I get, like, comfort vibes from it. Okay. Okay. It's, it's violent, but, you know, violence is comforting. <laughs> I see that for you. Ooh. House on Haunted Hill. <gasps> yes. The Vincent Price one. <laughs> of course. Even in the remake. <laughs> Even the remake, yeah. I'm, like, 13 Ghosts. <gasps> Comfort horror. Yeah. yeah. Those are some solid picks. Mm-hmm. I like them. Oh, yeah, those are just movies that I can just throw on at any time, and it's like, no matter how many times I've seen it, it's on in the background, whatever. Probably Poltergeist for you. Yes. Yeah. Midsummer for me. I was going to say Poltergeist, but then I already said that before for our favorite episodes. I was like, mm, say it again. I don't want to say it loud, say it proud. <laughs> <laughs> there are no rules here. <laughs> it's our podcast. We do what we want. All right. Has there ever been a time when you thought, Am I in a, a movie right now? A horror movie? Yes. Ooh. Yes. Do tell! <laughs> uh, so, twice in my life, I've been scared 
nearly to tears at death. Um, first time being very little. Uh, my parents were still together, so it was pre-97. Um, so I was like five, I think. And I had a Barbie dream boat, and I had a bunk bed. And the dream boat was up on the top bunk, and I would climb up on the top bunk and play with the Barbie boat or whatever. And I had two windows, uh, one facing the driveway, and I, I, my bedroom was on the second floor, and one facing the side yard, and there was a big old tree in the side yard, um, but it was so far away from the window that, like, there's no way in hell that, like, the tree would touch the window. Like, still to this day, it does not touch the window. Um, but I remember playing on the top bunk with my Barbies, and I heard, like, a tap, like, tapping on the window, like, tap, 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 tap. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the fuck is Like, you know, as a kid, I'm like, what is that? And because I'm a kid and I don't have the social graces to know better, I opened the curtains and I can picture what I saw clear as day. It was the outline of a face ah! and two green eyes staring, like glowing green eyes staring mm-hmm. at me. It scared me so bad that all of the sound left my ears. Like, I can still, like, I remember everything. And I flew. I didn't touch a single rung on that ladder. I jumped to the floor, ran to the living room, told my parents about it. And they opened the window, and there's obviously nothing there. Mm-hmm. And they're like, it's just the tree branches brushing against the window. But they don't touch no, the window. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. They don't touch the window. So that, I was like, like as a kid, I'm like, this is a, this is a fucking nightmare. Like, this yeah. is, I mean there's no way that this is real life right now and then the only other time I can think of was um I was home I thought I was alone and our house had been broken into once before I was getting I was putting my makeup on my base my my room was in the basement at this point and I heard glass break we had cats and I'm like eh, maybe a cat like knocked a glass down or whatever because it wasn't a lot of glass and then I heard more glass break and more glass break and I was like oh my god they're breaking into the fucking house. This is like a taken situation. This is like a kidnapping situation. This is this is fucking. It's what go was time. Your gut instinct? <laughs> well, with flight or fight, I'm a flight all the way. <laughs> I've proven this to myself time and time again. Um, so my because my room's in the basement, my window is ground level. I cranked that shit open, took the screen out. Was ca- at first I called like all my family because I I called my dad, didn't answer. Called my dad again, didn't answer. Called my stepmom, no answer. Call her again, no answer. Call my sister, no answer. My brother, no answer. My brother texts me and he's like hey, I'm at work. I was like, I think someone's breaking into the house. Like, what do I do? And he's like, I have a weapon in my room. If you can get to it, get to it, whatever. And I'm like, no, fuck this. So like, <laughs> I'm out. I left and I'm in the backyard and I'm trying to like look through the front yard and my aunt calls me and she was like, hey, are you home? And I was like, I think someone's breaking into the house. And she's like, oh, I'm actually right down the street. She was coming to drop something off. Oh, shit. And she's like, the garage door's open. Oh my God. And there's someone inside. And I was like, oh my God. And I was literally, I was half over my fence because I was getting ready. The police station's like right down the street. I was getting ready to run to the police station and my aunt pulls in the driveway and she's like, oh my God. She's like, it's your dad. And I was like, what? And she's like, he's in the garage. She's like, Bill, will you tell your daughter, you know, my dad was breaking light bulbs in the garage. Jesus. I was so fucking scared. (laughs) I don't blame you. My God. Yeah. But I was literally, I was like, nope, I'm out. Bye. (laughs) I would have jumped out the window myself. (laughs) For real. Have you ever, (laughs) have you ever experienced something like that? I feel like I've had, like, I feel like I've had moments. Like, there's, there's three that come to my, my, my brain. Okay. Um, well, first of all, anytime we left, uh, our old job in that parking garage, when, mm-hmm. like, the lights would go out, because the lights, like, the electricity in there was iffy at best. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, like, there are, there have been times where I had, had, like, had to leave alone. Of course, it's not great, like, not ideal, but it was late at night, and, you know, my car's the only one there, and I'm like, okay, this is definitely horror movie material right here. For sure. Um, Especially in that parking garage. My my room used to be in when I lived with my parents, uh, in the basement, and I remember one time specifically I had my my dresser set up and we had you know those like window wells, mm-hmm. uh, it was set up like where the mirror reflected it and I remember one time I know, <laughs> one time I was brushing my hair and I swear to God I saw a face in that window. Oh God. <sighs> yeah. That's fucking terrifying. Horrific. <laughs> oh my God. Um, and then there's one other time where I remember I. I think I had just, it was like around the time I had gotten my license and I was driving one of my friends home and I think she was still in the car with me. So she might be able to attest to this because we both had the same reaction where like I was driving her home and you know, we're like, we're we're pretty chatty, (laughs) but 
we were like dead silent on the way home because there was like this like looming fog it was like so atmospheric and i just remember having the weirdest feeling like everything the way that the light hit the fog nothing looked real so there was like a moment in time where i was like are we in a movie? Oh my god. <laughs> it was such a weird feeling and she felt the exact same thing. That's creepy. Something I know. Was looming in there. Oh, I know. Ooh. That was a good question because we I'm glad we both had these like moments yes. where we're like, "Oh god." <laughs> I, I feel like there's so many like I have another story too, but I don't want to like keep rambling, but like that is a really fucking good question. I know. There's so many times. I know. That or I just make myself so paranoid because I've seen so many horror movies that, like... <laughs> but it helps when there's a friend, like... Yeah. Because they can attest to it, too. Like, um, after I saw Paranormal Activity, I saw it with a friend, and we both were so freaked out by it that she was like, do you want to stay over at my house? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we were in her guest room, and the door opened by itself and it's like completely dark she didn't there was no tv in there and we were like oh that was weird and so we shut it and we put a book in front of it like a pile of books heavy books big books and we were talking or laying in bed five minutes later the door flies open Ah! like i'm not flies open and we were like nope again flight uh we climbed on her (laughs) roof because we had access to it and we stayed on the roof until the sun came up jesus like we would not go back in the house we were like fuck this but it's, like, stuff like that, like, okay, maybe if that happened... It's instinctual. Huh? Yeah, and if, like, maybe if that happened by, like, if I, it was just me, okay, maybe I've seen too many horror movies, it's, like, you know, totally explainable. But when you're both there, it's, like, you saw that too, right? Like, that's weird, right? Yeah. So, with, like, with the fog it's thing. It's the same it's feeling weird. for both of you. Exactly. You can't make that up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Fucking cool. What is your greatest fear? Ooh. My greatest fear? fear. I don't, I don't want to say because then people will use it against yeah. me and that's my answer. <laughs> my greatest fear is none of your goddamn business. Yes. Is it too dark to say death? No. <laughs> no that w- I I also say death. Because Although, it's, we'll go ahead. No, I was just going to say de- death for sure because I can think of how many times have we had those conversations oh where it's God. like we have to stop talking because ah! Well, we almost made each other black out talking yeah. about death. Yeah. yeah. That, that is like the kind of suffocating anxiety panic attack that I don't wish to have ever Exactly. Again. What's your greatest fear, other than death, if you had to say? Well, so, if we're talking about fear in horror movies, mm. um, for me, like, the thing that always gets me is uh, when something is at the end of, like, a hallway or like, mm-hmm. a corridor, you know? Like, The Conjuring too. When the nun is just standing at the end of the hallway, staring. <laughs> Scariest part of that movie. For sure. For sure. Like, I don't know what it is. Or, like, even in, like, Insidious. Like, in the window. Mm-hmm. When she's just sitting there. Oh, no. I like that at all. Or, like, standing in a corner. Standing at the end of something. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I think about that a lot. It always gets me. Like, especially if I'm at home and I'm walking and I'm walking past, like, an open doorway. A lot of times I won't, like, you know how when you're watching a horror movie you're like, oh, my God, how come they don't turn the lights on? I am that person. Like, if yeah. I'm at home... The light is on in the living room, and unless I really cannot see, I probably won't turn a light on. You yeah. know, like, if I'm walking from the hallway to the bathroom, I'm not going to turn the light on. Right. You know? Um, but I always had that thought, like, ooh, what if, like, I'm walking by the doorway, and then somebody's just in there, and then, like, you think you see it, you It always up, comes at the worst time. It does, You're, yeah. like, dead-ass asleep, and you're like, whoa, what if someone, wait, I'm peeing, and what if somebody walks by? <laughs> right, exactly. And then you're like, oh god, and then you're running back to bed. <laughs> it's a scumbag brain. I hate that. Yeah. It's a horror fan brain. <laughs> it's true. Oh my god. Oh, this is a good one. This this is a solid one. And I have such a a lengthy answer, but I'm going to try to like keep it tight. <laughs> okay. Five actors you would cast in a movie. Five actors. Just in any movie? Yeah. Bill Skarsgård. Oh, yeah. Are you in this movie, too? <laughs> I am the love interest. <laughs> You're the main girl. It's a porno. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Skarsgård. Samara Weaving. Oh, God, I, gotta go, I gotta go three more. <laughs> um, Just put three more hot dudes in there. <laughs> that's true. There's so many. Do they have to be from horror movies? I, I, didn't, I, don't, I didn't ask the question. Oh. But there are no rules. <laughs> right? I uh, said it in the beginning. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
I feel like I'm a, like a Billy on the street when he's like, name a woman. Uh, uh, <laughs> name a woman. Anyone. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, okay. Bill Skarsgård, Samara Weaving, Nicole Kidman, Johnny Depp. You. <laughs> Me. <laughs> You're Me. an actor. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Those are my answers. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm laying it all up. My themes are coming up. Okay. <laughs> a Clue reboot. And you know that okay. reboots are iffy at best. But okay. a Clue reboot. Okay. Featuring Samara Weaving, Anya Taylor Joy, Tom Hiddleston, Sleepy Hollow version, Johnny Depp. Fuck yeah. And Florence Pugh. <laughs> I love that. I and love I that so much. And I put a six woman, uh, Bruce Campbell. <laughs> well, naturally. <laughs> Solid casting. I like that. I would see that. One hundred and fifty. I know I chewed and put six, but there, there's like. Well, a you lot need of to have six people. So. Your answer actually had detail. <laughs> I know. Mine I was like, oh, it's a porno. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bang a bunch of hot guys. Hey, I mean, uh, right? No, not no. <laughs> I'm not I'm definitely not saying no to Bill Skarsgård. Are you kidding me? Uh, oh, Killian Murphy. That's who I'd put. Yeah. He's Can't forget one. him. He's, he's my OG. You're dropping Nicole Kidman. I'm putting in no, Killian never Murphy. drop Nicole Kidman. Never. I'm dropping me. Because <laughs> I'm a terrible actress. Just ask my two movies on YouTube. <laughs> Plug! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also my, my, my movies from Film Camp, which are on a DVD that no one will ever see because I destroyed it. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unleash all of that. <laughs> Head over to Patreon. Oh, <laughs> and God. You're in for a treat. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder... <laughs> That would be a fun, like, Patreon release. Like, only patrons can see my horrible directorial debuts. <laughs> That's, like, something you would do when you're, like, uber famous and, like, True. oh, my earliest work. That would be, like, a YouTube video where it's, like, YouTuber reacts to first video. Do it. But then I'd have to be a YouTuber. Ugh. Yeah. And who wants to do that? Ugh, not me. We tried. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's awkward as fuck. And then we went to Taco Bell instead <laughs> when we realized that our, choice. our YouTube <laughs> our YouTube career was dead before it even started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like both of our movies are it's a stacked cast, you know? Like and we it. both have Samara Weaving. I know. Because she's great. She's, uh, I can't even say she's up and coming <laughs> because she's already been coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so mature. <laughs> But <laughs> it's like Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> yes. Uh, Are we gonna do it? It's <laughs> coming. But she's it right now. She is. She's hot. Right. That that's Samara. So hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is your favorite genre or subgenre of horror? I like slow burns. If that can be a subgenre. Slow burn psychological horror. <laughs> yes. Yes, slow burn psychological are probably up there with my favorite because I don't want to say you have to be smart to like them, but there's more than just cheap jump scares. Yeah, there's and depth. <laughs> there's depth. Yes, that's what I will say. Like any, like Hereditary, like Midsummer, like even the Saw franchise, for as goofy as it is, before it became like an off the rails, balls to the walls. <laughs> yeah. Like, the first one, psychological. The second one, even psychological. The sixth one, diamond in the rough, because I think the sixth one was very much a callback to, like, the first two, where it was, like, more psychological. And yes, that one had more violence than the first two. But, stuff like that. Like, I really appreciate that. Or, um, what's the, frailty is another good example. Yes, psychological. I like it. You know, yeah. What, I have, what about you? I have two answers because I like them for two different reasons. I'll say gothic horror visually. <gasps> yes. Visually, I think it's, like, always stunning, and it's my vibe. <laughs> um, but the ones that's... The, the subgenre that scares me the most is usually supernatural. For sure, yeah. Like, that's always what gets me. <laughs> but, I, you know, I... Uh, there's so, it's, it, that one was a hard one because I like so many movies in different subgenres for different mm -hmm. reasons but those are the two that stick out in my brain is like i have solid reasoning <laughs> for yeah. it you know well paranormal stuff is scary because it's you know like we i've said it a bunch of times with like a serial killer or you know a physical threat 
it's so easy to tell someone like this person's after or you know like there's yeah. there's a physical being whereas like with psych- psychological the horror is that these things are happening to you and no one believes you because you can't prove it right you know it's like that's why demonic possessions are always scary to me because how do you most people i should i shouldn't say most people a lot of people it seems like don't even believe in things like that right so how if you truly were possessed how do you even prove that Right. You know. It's the unknown. <laughs> exactly. It's so, like, creepy. I don't know. It's it's those kind of movies that scare me the most just because it's so unexplained. Right. Now, and uh, maybe not real. Maybe real. We don't know. <laughs> right. That's the horror of it. <laughs> yeah. That's truly. But, like, like you said with psychological, that is the real horror. <laughs> right. You are your own worst enemy. That's true. So, and it's things that, while these movies might contain things that can never happen... There's things that can happen right. and do happen, and it's fucked. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, Midsummer, you know, it's like she came – it all started from this tragedy. She's in this, like, horrible mindset, and she's distraught. And everything she's experiencing, like, in a way is almost, like, dreamlike, you know, with all the portraits and the right. music and everybody's so, like, happy and la, la, la. But there's that, like, uncomfortable feeling that you get in the pit of your stomach. You know something's wrong. But because of your headspace, it's like – she because she's our character like she's the point of view we're seeing it's like are we uncomfortable because of where her head is at or is this really fucked up yeah you know it's like stuff like that that makes you makes you think or like the things that you are like did that really just happen yeah like it's a like, it's a double take for you as the audience and that character so it's absolutely like, <laughs> absolutely now on the flip side of that do you have a genre or subgenre of horror that you think is overrated Overrated? Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Or like your least favorite. I don't know. Do you? Yes. Zombies. Oh. Oh. I'm glad you said it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Someone had I to. I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, it's not that I don't like zombie movies. I just, they're not my favorite. And they're so overdone. I agree. I agree. So overdone. I mean, However, I watched when I, when I watched Train to Busan, like earlier this year or last year, uh, I thought it was amazing, and that's a zombie movie. <laughs> there, there are definitely like with everything in life, there's exceptions to every rule. Oh yeah, I do agree with that. I think Twenty Eight Days Later, Twenty Eight Weeks Later, I think really that's good. really good. Um, other than that, a zombie movie is a zombie movie. Yeah, you know. Uh, it is what it is. Yeah. I just, I've they seen so many me. of them that I'm just like, Neh. Yeah. And, I don't know. I mean, I guess with any movie, it's like, there's only so many ways you can do it. But with a zombie movie, it's like, it's just not a creature that I'm like, oh, this is so new and innovating and I'm really scared. Yeah. Well, you there's know? only so much you can do with them, I feel like. Right. You know? They run fast. They run slow. They're smart. They're not. The yeah. blood infects you. The blood doesn't infect you. Mm-hmm. It's a, you know, I don't know. It's, it, it, it is. <laughs> it just is, yeah. Yeah. I would be really interested... In a zombie movie where it's like, let's say we live in a world where a zombie apocalypse has happened, but they come up with a cure, they can reverse the zombie, like, infection. So, like, I, w- I want to see a movie Putting about the world that. back together. Yeah, like, what is, what does a person's life look like once, so they've, they've had a life, they've been bitten by a zombie, now they're a reanimated corpse or an infected being- <gasps> wreaking havoc eating people what if you're able to bring that person back what are the psychological effects of that like do they remember anything or because there was death do they not remember they and kind like, of did that you know in warm mean? bodies <laughs> did they in a comedic fashion yeah it's been so long oh i guess so I yeah a zombie but it's like more like humorous because yeah she had like that inner dialogue as a zombie but True. Then i think at the end he turns human I think so or look close to it right it's been so long since i've seen it but if you didn't do it in a humorous oh what if they did it in a dark way like that's what a, i'm saying like oh i'm fucked up because i was a zombie <laughs> right like take right like the zombies were like they have don't they don't have lips anymore you know yeah, well, or like they're missing a limb or like yeah i don't know like what would a 28 days later rage zombie virus it having zombie look like yeah if you could reverse the virus Ooh. i don't know i think that's interesting but that's really the only thing I'm interested in. Filmmakers, please don't steal our idea. <laughs> yeah, patent pending, copyright, trademark, 
All that. Hard out of your <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Those were some solid questions. Yeah. Thanks to everyone who asked. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Sending us your burning questions. I know. Hopefully, I mean, we had some hot takes in there, so. That's true. I feel like there was a lot of times we were. We're going to get hate mail. (laughs) Don't hate us for being controversial yet brave. Death threats for sure. You know, at the end of the day, horror is subjective because what scares one person may not scare, you know, scare another person. And you can't hate me for not thinking zombies are scary. Yeah. You can't. And there's a huge topic can, going around shouldn't. on Twitter right now about, like, horror gatekeeping. Y'all being like, well, if you haven't seen these movies, you're not a true horror fan, and blah, blah, blah. And I have some words oh. about that, which, like, I won't get into, but it's, like, it's ridiculous, you know? Yeah. Horror, yeah, I haven't seen The Omen. I will see The Omen one day, but don't pressure me! <laughs> right! I want to watch it on my own terms. It doesn't make me not a horror fan by saying, oh, I haven't seen this movie, you know? Right. Like, oh, how dare, that means you don't like horror. Yeah. That's, it's so elitist and, I don't know, like, really turns me, it's stuff like that that turns me off from seeing a movie. Like, mm-hmm. it's, I think it's like a lot of people, when Game of Thrones came out, everyone was talking about Game of Thrones and it turned a lot of people off from watching us. They're like, oh, well. Overrated. Overhyped. Exactly. Overhyped. Overrated. Not that good. We had a few friends like that that mm-hmm. refused for a very long time to watch it and then finally watched it and gave in and realized it's good. Just give them time to come to it on their own terms. Yeah. And it will come. You know, like. Yeah. But you it's don't also. You have to see every horror movie to be a horror fan. You can appreciate exactly. what it is. There's different reasons that people like horror. We yeah. find comfort in it. Whatever. We like the feeling of being scared. Whatever your reason is, it, it's, yeah, it, eh, it's moot. Horror should be a community that brings us together. It shouldn't be like an elitist competition where I've seen these horror movies and I'm a bigger horror fan than you. I know more about horror because X, Y, and Z. Oh, you don't know who directed this? Well, then you're not a big fan. Like, that's what turns me off from a lot of things. Yeah. You know, so like, I think horror should be a community. We, I feel like we're a big community, but a small community. You know, like, horror movies are not well represented in, like, the Academy. Or, right. you know, like, they, there's not a lot of, like, horror movies that get appreciation for, you know, it's like, we have Silence of the Lambs, Get Out, yeah, Shape of Water, I guess, if you want to consider that a horror movie. But, like, you know, it's we don't really see that a lot, so, like. Let's, let's come together and bond and not yeah. do this weird shit where, let's like, not fight I'm better kids. than you. <laughs> right. Let's it's, come together and be spooky together. We're all outcasts, <laughs> clearly, because, you know, I don't know. Yeah. We're, it's a big community, but it's a tight community, so I don't think there has to be any, like, hate towards anybody about what they like and what they don't like. Exactly. <laughs> Everything is subjective. Let's not hate. Let's appreciate. Hell yeah. Yeah. But... I guess that's gonna wrap it up here, yeah, right? Yeah, that's gonna wrap it up. Yeah. That's all. We, that's all we have for today. Thank you guys for submitting your questions. We loved answering them. It was so fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun just to like chit chat. Yeah. Give our opinions. Let us know if you like the chit chatty episode. Yes. Because we do like to ramble. <laughs> we do. I will talk at length about anything. <laughs> uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, thanks for joining us on our fiftieth episode spooky bonanza spooktacular and thanks for being with us for when this comes out yeah (laughs) for 50 episodes and almost a whole year yeah it's been crazy it's been fun this past year would have been a nightmare without without this place (laughs) yes the safe space that we call home here at the fright mike headquarters and if you're interested we are on instagram on facebook and on twitter give us a follow Send us, send us a review. Yes, give us five stars, two thumbs up, if you like three if you're movie. weird. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> but nothing lower than that. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, our, our new episodes will drop every Wednesday. We have new themes every month, uh, if you're new here. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, if there is a theme that you'd like us to cover that you Ooh. don't know if we're going to cover or a movie you'd like us sound to cover, off. sound off below. Send that to us on any of our socials. Because I'm curious. I'm always up for requests. Yes. But until <laughs> next time, I'm Liz. I'm Sam. Rest, Rest in, in peace. peace.